What's up, Mitten Squad? My name is Paul, and welcome back to another Top 6 video. In this video, I'll be going over the 6 saddest stories in Fallout. Number 6. In Fallout 4, some of the most ruthless and careless individuals you'll come across are raiders. In the story of the sole survivor, the raiders are the bad guys. But like every story, there's another side. They're the good guys, and you might be the bad guys, slaughtering hundreds of raiders because you think you're right. The raiders have friends too though. In the commonwealth, you can find a raider on his knees next to a grave, grieving for his deceased friend. If you listen closely instead of instantly blowing his head off, you'll hear the raider describe what he's done, describing it as hell, how he hopes the next person dies clean, no screaming, and how he wants to quit being a raider. There's also another grave next to the first one, perhaps it was even for that raider himself. Number 5. The Refrigerated Story of Billy Peabody Billy Peabody is a character from Fallout 4 who you'll encounter in the side quest Kid in a Fridge, located inside a refrigerator south of University Point. When the bombs fell during the Great War, Billy hid in a fridge to try and protect himself. After the bombs stopped falling, he tried to exit the fridge, only to realize that the mechanism in the door broke, locking him inside the fridge for over 200 years. Due to prolonged exposure to radiation, Billy turned into a ghoul, which would explain why he survived for over 200 years on little to no food or water, instead of dying after a few days or weeks. The sole survivor can find him in 2287 and return Billy to his parents, Carol and Matt Peabody. What makes Billy's story so sad isn't that he lost his family or anything like that. In fact, his story ends on a high note, being reunited with his parents. What's sad is the fact that he was locked in a fridge for over 200 f***ing years. Just think about it, being trapped in complete darkness, in a confined space, with nothing to do, locked away with just your thoughts for over 200 years. How he's still sane is quite the mystery. Number 4. The Vaults A lot of the Fallout vaults are incredibly f***ed up, but two of them stand out to me as being sadder than the rest. The first vault is Vault 87, a forced evolutionary virus research facility. Some of the original vault dwellers were put in airtight chambers and forcefully exposed to FEV, turning them into super mutants. They, in turn, forcefully mutated the remaining vault dwellers. Those who weren't mutated were killed. The Vault 87 mutants became obsessed with preserving their new species. Since FEV rendered them sterile, they opened the vault door and anyone unfortunate enough to cross paths with them was killed or dragged back to the vault where they were mutated, usually by being dunked in tanks of FEV. The second vault is Vault 75. Vault 75's goal was basically to create superhumans, to genetically alter selected vault inhabitants to better the human race. Fittingly, this vault was located under Malden Middle School in the Commonwealth. When the Great War began, children, parents, and faculty flocked to the self-proclaimed safe haven. The children were taken to the atrium, while the adults were escorted elsewhere and executed by vault security. The children were subject to physical and mental tests. If they were deemed intelligent and physically advanced enough, they were harvested for their genes at the age of 18, or, if the overseer permitted, they could join the vault's science team. The other children were killed at some point before they turned 18. Number 3. There's not much to this one. Every Fallout game has skeletons propped up in sad or funny ways. Sometimes they're on a toilet with a newspaper, sometimes they're on a mattress holding hands, but what you rarely see is a small skeleton. The remains of children. In Zion Canyon, slightly northwest of the Zion Valley Welcome Booth, you can find a small canyon with a crashed bus lodged between its rocky walls. Inside you'll find corpses, quite a few of them actually. I think Follows Chalk says it best. In the river, there's a twisted pile of metal and glass, all full of bones. Joshua says they were scouts, but they looked awful small to me. Number 2. The Survivalist On October 22nd, 2077, the Great War began. Some were lucky and died instantly. Others lingered on and died slowly over the course of a few days, weeks, or even months. Others still lived on, scavenged for food and shelter, lived on for years. One man lived, lost, and became an icon for a community. Randall Dean Clark, from Fallout New Vegas' Honest Hearts DLC. Five days after the Great War, he told an old couple, who had been blinded by the flash, that he was going to get some help and prop them up against a car. Then he blew their brains out. He eventually made his way to a cave in Zion, where he lived for several years. In November 2095, he helped a group of survivors find their friend who had broken his leg far away from their camp. In February 2096, a group of vault dwellers from Vault 22 attacked the group Randall had helped, killing all of the men and some of the women, taking the rest of the women and children with them. 
Two days later, he discovered that the Vault Dwellers had eaten the women and children. Over the next 10 days, he killed 24 of the Vault Dwellers. He eventually met a Vault Dweller named Sylvie, who abandoned her people. In 2100, Sylvie got pregnant and died during childbirth, along with their small child in March 2101. That night, he planned on shooting himself. By 2113, he was still alive, still planned to shoot himself, and still didn't do it. In April 2123, another group had moved onto the lands where the first group he encountered lived 30 years ago. Randall started leaving them gifts, notes, books, weapon manuals, and medical supplies. At some point, he started signing every note he left with the father. In his last set of notes, he wrote about each member of the group and what made them special. He told them that the father was pleased with their kind nature. The father in the cave died on July 23rd, 2124. He was 71 years old, but his legend lived on through the Sorrows tribe. Number 1. In the Commonwealth lies a quaint little house. Unsuspecting to most people, the house belonged to a man named Edwin. He moved to that shack after his presumed wife, Annika, died. His only companion after the loss of his wife was a mutant cow named Bess. One day, Edwin was out on the lake when a swarm of bloatflies started harassing Bess. Edwin overturned his boat in the process of rescuing his friend. Later, he realized that he lost one of the few things that he cared about, a locket. He went out on the lake to search for the locket. His boat overturned once more, and down into the darkness Edwin went. Edwin found Annika's locket and died clutching it in his hand at the bottom of the lake. That locket can be scrapped for two silver, so make sure to take it and destroy it. Alright, that's gonna do it for this video about the six saddest stories in Fallout. If you think I missed some, which I very well may have, leave a comment and let me know, and if I missed enough, I might make another video covering even more sad stories. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, go ahead and dislike it. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for any future top 10 video about any game or game character. Follow me on Twitter, at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.